Hello, it's John Burford with Chart of the Week for Monday the 8th of June. And um, this could well be one of my most important posts for some time. Uh, we, uh, we have a very rapidly rising stock market, uh, stock market especially in the States. Um, but I feel there's a huge elephant in the room that has not been noticed yet by equity traders. Um, and that is in the shape of very sharply rising bond yields. This is the uh, chart of the Treasury bond, the 30-year bond, which is uh, a benchmark for me anyway, um, in uh, sovereign interest rates. And from uh, about six weeks ago, it made a low down here, and then we've had a sharply rising uh, trend here. And that's uh, meant that the yield has gone up by about 50% in six weeks. Now, the implications of this are uh, pretty important, I believe, because if the debt load, which is huge uh, on governments and corporates, um, is, is there, a rising interest payment bill will certainly put massive pressure on those companies and those governments. And in fact, instead of looking at the pandemic, which everybody has their eyes on, um, maybe we should be looking more at the bond market. <clears throat> so I'm making a case for the Treasury bond yield, which is now about 1.8% as of Friday. I think it's going to exceed 2%, probably up to this region here, around 2.5% uh, fairly quickly. Now, that, of course, is going against what everybody believes. Uh, everybody believes the Fed are going to do everything in their power to prevent all this. <laughs> but um, I honestly believe they do not have the power to do so. After all, the uh, Treasury market is still a public market. And although it is being manipulated to a large extent by the Fed and other agencies, uh, the basic um, forces driving the market are still intact. In other words, it is sentiment that drives the markets. And of course, one of the beneficiaries of rising bond yields is uh, are the banks, it is Lloyd's, <coughs> uh, which I follow quite avidly, as you know. We have a nice one, two, three, four, five down to here on a big, big momentum divergence that usually signifies a pretty solid reversal. <clears throat> and we are getting one now. We've got an A wave, a B wave. It's just broken that minor trend line. In fact, you could make a case for this being a head and shoulders reversal. Here's the left shoulder, here's the head on a much, um, much uh, higher momentum, which is necessary for a head and shoulders. And that's the right shoulder. This is the neckline. And a head and shoulders measure of uh, the target is up in here above the 40 pence region. And I just want to make a comment on Friday's non-forums uh, jobs report, which everybody was surprised with. I was. Everybody else was, I believe. <clears throat> it showed an actual growth in jobs in May when everybody was, was expecting a huge collapse because of the furloughs and the layoffs. Well, whether the, uh, the numbers are manipulated or not, the fact remains that the bounce was a little tiddler. <clears throat> I think that's a, a dead cat bounce. In fact, it could be classified as a dead kitten bounce. Now, this is the, um, the jobs um, uh, created in the States. This is the uh, last decade of jobs creation, low-paying jobs mostly, uh, which the president is glowing about. But it doesn't look like it's a V-shaped recovery yet. And I really think the, uh, the jobs growth will be pretty meager and then another plunge. <clears throat>